Hi, my name is Kabir Shagaya. I work in the logistics industry in Nigeria. I run a company called Zippy Logistics. We are logistics specialists who focus on e-commerce, haulage, and also all other forms of logistics, and we consult for companies that need to operate in the logistics industries in Nigeria. Zippy has been on and going for three years, but um, the light bulb moment I had for Zippy was the day in which we had a really bad day in the office. There was literally no packages, no work. This was about two and a half years ago. So I was just, all the staff were looking at me, nothing to do, all the drivers were looking at me. So I just got into the car and went on a drive. And I just drove straight to one of one, a new client's office. I got to the reception and I said, look, I would like to see your MD. And they were like, from where would you want? I was like, look, I'm a logistics company and I have a lot to offer. And I think if you give me a chance to see him, I promise you he will not regret it. I waited for about two hours and eventually they let me have a meeting with the MD and then after speaking to him and actually pitching exactly what I wanted to do to him, in three weeks after that we got one of the biggest and best contracts that could have helped us sustain our business for a while and that was the moment that I realized that one action towards doing something, even though things look bleak, nothing is impossible. And ever since that, every other challenge that we face when it comes to the economy or stuff that's happening in Nigeria or whatever it is, I have the confidence. Because once you have, once you put a theory to test and you've had a successful experience, that also gives, instills confidence in you to try it again and again and again. So now that I've had that successful experience from that first issue, it's been able to motivate me to always make sure that our company stays on top of its game. Doing business, I've learned a lot of lessons and I've actually been able to have a lot of experiences that taught me different things. But the most important lesson I think I've learned is discipline and relationships. Because one thing I've realized is that it's not the smartest idea that makes it to the top, it's the most liked idea. So even if you don't, you may not have, you may not be the most technically capable in your industry or you may not have a unique selling point over your competitors, but your, relate, your ability to relate with your client and to, and to offer them peace of mind is what separates you from the rest. I keep saying, when you look at different industries like accountants, lawyers, doctors, dentists, they all do one thing, which is they instill peace of mind into their patients. And, because, and the moment they do that, the best doctors are the ones with the bedside manner. And one thing I realized that in business is just the same. The more your client likes you, the more business you'll do with your client. You may have a contract that's meant to last a six month period, but the moment you have a good relationship with your, with your client, going forward, not only will they recommend you to other people, they will also even want to do more business with you. More, they, will not, they want to do more business with you and they'll even try and find a ways to encourage you to do other things that you're not even good at. Clients end up teaching the contractors sometimes just to make sure they improve and they hone in their skills. So that's in terms of relationships and in terms of discipline, one thing I've realized is that um, it's very tempting to, being an entrepreneur, it's a, it's a hard journey. It's very tempting to want to live the flashy life right now, you know, have the nice things, uh, you, you have the money, you're making the money, you might as well spend it. But reinvesting in your business and being disciplined enough to put yourself on a salary or to be able to build something sustainable, that's what separates a sustainable business from uh, Mr. Right Now, because what you're trying to do is you're trying to build a future, you're trying to leave a legacy. One thing about Zippy is um, I like the fact that we have, a, we have an organization that is bigger than us, it's bigger than me, it's bigger than everyone that works in this company, and the company stands for itself. And to do that, you need to be disciplined. You need to be disciplined to make sure that you're not the face of the business, that the business has its own face and the business has its own reputation, its own brand. Because you don't want to be a name brand by as an individual. You want your business to be bigger than you. That's why you have you have Bill Gates, you have Microsoft, you have a Virgin, you have a Richard Branson. Like you want to make sure that your brand is more recognizable than you as an individual. So the discipline to take a back seat and let your business flourish is one of the most important keys to business. You see, business, being an entrepreneur, business is really tough because you have to make decisions and you have to be able to live with the decisions that you make. You can't second guess yourself. You have to be sure of yourself. You have to have a lot of confidence in your ability and your thoughts and you have to believe in yourself. And one of the drawbacks of that is that sometimes you'll make mistakes. Now, 
my biggest lesson when it comes to mistakes is that it's not about the mistakes you make, it's about what you do to correct them. Now, one of the biggest mistakes that I've made as an entrepreneur is losing my temper. Because if I lose my temper when I work for an organization, it's fine. You know, you get a slap on the wrist, you get a, they write up a note, and then you'll be fine. But if you lose your temper as an entrepreneur, you could possibly lose the relationship with the client and lose the business. Which, in, which has happened to me in the past because, you know, sometimes I feel bigger organizations try to take advantage of smaller ones, so, you know, you lose your temper. But then with time, I've started to realize that unless, don't think about right now, think about the future. So in some cases, even when I know we're not in the wrong, I apologize, I try and make sure I mend the relationships and I manage my clients appropriately because it's, it may not, you may feel as if you're letting go of your pride or your integrity or whatever but like you see in sometimes in business you have to stoop to conquer because you have to humble yourself to realize that the business is not just about you it's about everybody else that depends on you for a salary and all the families are depending on you from the people that you're employing so the moment you decide to make that statement to tell a client to leave or whatever you need to think about everybody else that's going to have to be affected by that decision that you're making so Taking yourself out of the situation and doing the necessary things to get the business back up and running is the most important thing to do. Pride has to go aside. Zippy's had a couple of ach achievements over the past couple of years. Like we've had them ranging in industries from like uh, medical distribution to oil and gas to e-commerce. We've done a lot of different things with different industries. But I'll say the proudest moment, like the, the happiest moment that I've had was um, when I had my interview with uh, Arise News in England. And then I was sitting down with my whole family watching Sky News, watching, watching a channel on Sky. And there I was giving an interview regarding the situation of the Ebola crisis and distribution of logistics of vaccines in Nigeria. And to me, that was, that was when I realized that, you know, this Zippy thing is actually, is actually serious. Like, it's something that I can actually can take really seriously and learn more about. Like, that moment is where I keep saying the whole thing changed for me. I talked about wanting to do, go and do an MBA, want to learn more about logistics, want to become the pioneer in logistics in Africa, want to build systems. Like, it, give, it's, it instilled the confidence in me to imagine and dream bigger. Like, I wasn't brought up in the logistics industry per se, but I had a passion for the fact that I was good at something and I was good at it initially. But after that experience, I now became more passionate about it. I realized, you know what, not only are you good at it, you actually really enjoy it. And because of that, being able to be recognized internationally for something I started locally in less than three years, I think that was, that was the point for me that I realized that, you know, this is something I want to do for the rest of my life. Over the past few years, Zippy's had a lot of milestones and a lot of achievements, and we've made a lot of decisions on what clients to go with, what clients not to go with, what business decisions to make, and what's guided us to this point. And all of that has been governed by one rule, and that's our mantra, which is, you're only as rich as whose problems you're solving. Now, the way that works, that is the guiding force for what every entrepreneur needs to do whenever it's bringing up, bringing up a business plan or a business case or whatever. As long as you understand that concept, you will always be able to be successful because that's what would determine the sustainability of whatever business plan you have. Now, I'll give you an example. If you're solving a big company like IBM's problems and you're, so, you're, you're solving a big problem which they have with paper, for instance, you will be building a client that can actually afford to pay a significant amount of money. However, if you're solving a lot of SMEs problems, you have to be aware of the fact that SMEs are currently in a struggling environment so they will not be able to afford to solve the kind of, that kind of problem. So what we do is before we assess taking on a new client, we figure out exactly how much we will be able to put into it and how much value we can be able to get out of it. And that way, so you don't realize that not every business is for everybody. You just have to know what business is for you and how best you can serve that business. So you're better doing 10 businesses very well than 100 businesses partially well. So once you understand the concept of who your client is and who your demographic is and who your target market is, you're going to be able to guide your business in the right direction. Mm -hmm.